Hi, I am Kedger on two wheels and let's talk about engine mappings. So, uh, this will be a bit simplified and I might say something that's not entirely correct because this is what I've learned over the years from what engine mappings are and how they work. So if there's anyone with actual first-hand knowledge, uh, please correct me in the comments. So keep attention to the comments. There might be some very interesting comments below. And please comment if you actually know what you're saying and not, oh, I think it's this way because I've seen an engine once in my life. No. Mechanical engineers, electronics engineers, people who really, really know this shit, okay? So, whoops, sorry about the swear. I'm trying to cut down on the swearing. So, onwards, because I don't have much time. Um, engine mapping, okay. First things first. Your fuel-injected engine is going to have a ton of sensors around the engine. For example, there is a sensor at the exhaust, which senses how much gasoline Wow, a sensor sense is brilliant. Okay, which senses how much gasoline is actually coming out through the exhaust so that it tells the ECU, your electronic control unit, if there's unburned gasoline in the cylinders, which means it tells it to adjust the amount of fuel going into the engine or the amount of air or both. It tells you about the quality of the explosion. It also, I suppose, it also detects oxygen coming out, so it tells you that you've got too much air, not enough gasoline. There's, um, there's sensors telling you when the cylinders are actually firing, when the spark plugs are firing on the cylinders, which is usually where the check engine light comes from. There's, if uh, the spark plug doesn't fire, it generally generates an alarm and on goes your light. Or if the electrics aren't working, stuff like that. There's a ton of sensors. And there's one sensor in particular which has quite a bit of importance. There is a sensor on the camshaft. I know, it's the drive shaft inside the engine. That's the thingy that pushes the cylinders up and down. And it looks like a, a big lumpy rod because it has uh, other pieces, parts that push, when they rotate, they push the cylinders up and down and the valves and whatnot. So, that thing, I'll call it the camshaft, might be the wrong term, but I do not know the correct term in English, sorry. Um, so, you've got a sensor on that camshaft, and that sensor tells you how much stress is going through that, how much force is on it. And why is that important? Well, have you ever noticed, and this is why I actually started this vlog, why when motorcycles idling it sounds different than when it's fully accelerating at the same revs for the same throttle. Haven't you ever noticed that? Especially if uh, fuel inject car covered bikes don't suffer from this, but fuel injected ones suffer. Just, I'm going to put it in first. Listen. Now listen. Did you hear the difference? Look. See how louder it is? Well, that's that sensor working. What it does, it tells the ECU how much force is going through the engine. When it's idling, there's no, nearly no force. So it tells the ECU, okay, we're idling, it's cool, nothing's happening. But when you're accelerating, say up a hill or something, it tells the ECU, okay, there is a lot of strength, a lot of energy, a lot of power already on this thing. It's, it's being stressed. What the ECU then does is, when you ask it for full power, and that's how the ECU works, I'm just going to give you a, a quick tour and then I'll explain better. When you ask for full power, the ECU goes very fast, because I think it works at 100 Hz, so that's 100 times a second. First, first cycle of programming says, okay, driver asked, full power, what's the, what's the strength on the camshaft? None. Okay, then let's give him 10 horsepower. Because he doesn't need all, there's nothing happening, he doesn't need 50 horsepower, this is what this bike does, doesn't need 50, let's give him 10. Then next cycle, which is 1 one-hundredth of a second afterwards, it reevaluates that. And it goes, okay, what now? Oh, now the strength of the camshaft is, let's say, 30 something, 30 bananas for scale. 
There are 30 bananas of fu or force inside the camshaft. Okay, so he needs a bit more. Let's give him 30 horsepower this time. And then on the next, next cycle, on the third 100th of a second, it goes. Okay, what about now? Well, now there are 50 bananas. Okay, then let's give him 40 horsepower. And so forth and so forth. So it decides, the computer is deciding how much horsepower you actually need. It's not actually deciding on horsepower, it's actually deciding on torque. But you get the picture. It works like that. And it's so fast you don't really notice it. What you notice is the sound is different because you're not getting the full power. When you're revving at idle, you're not getting 100 horsepower coming out the back because you don't need them. That will be just wasting fuel. And that's why fuel injected bikes save so much fuel because when you're when you start accelerating there's a, a period in which you're using a lot less fuel than you would on a carbon bike because the bike is actually only using the horsepower you need because you're not going to be pumping down into into the bike more power than you actually need if you're in neutral why the hell would you want 100 horsepower you're doing nothing you're just rotating the engine more so it doesn't really need that so you're going to get full power when you're, you're on full acceleration and the bike is actually pushing itself okay so sometimes even at low revs even at low gears first second you roll the throttle fully and you're not getting the full 50 horsepower you're getting less because you don't need that much that's why the purists don't like fuel injected they don't like a brain telling them how much power they actually need they prefer that on their hands so now how does it work imagine an excel sheet or as they used to be called a spreadsheet yeah a spreadsheet imagine a spreadsheet so you will have actually it might need a 3d one but okay you have a spreadsheet so on that spreadsheet you have a range of revs say 1000 revs, 1100 revs, 1200 revs, 1300 revs and on the other hand you have how much throttle you've given it and on each of those points you have a amount of fuel to jump to pump into the cylinders and that's how it basically works okay it's not only two columns that's why you said I said you probably needed three because you need a lot more parameters you need the drive shaft strength tensile what we'll get out of a sensor thingy you are also going to need some modification from the gasoline sensor on the exhaust you might need a modification from an oxygen sensor at the front of the engine which measures oxygen coming into the air so it's adjusts itself automatically for example you're going to a higher altitude it, it adjusts the mixture you're going to need there's a lot of things that for each rev in each throttle input it then maps out uh, an according amount of gas to put into the cylinders which then equates into engine power blah 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 so that's basically how it works a gigantic s spreadsheet with loads of parameters in which you put in the input parameters and for each rev it gives you a setting of torque which then translates into horsepower once you get it out of the gearbox so that's basically how it works and so what are engine mappings well engine mapping is actually that particular spreadsheet itself what you do if you want to change engine mappings and I'm thinking about for example the MT-09 which has the spicy the the awesome the boring and the standard mode a B and STD is basically change the engine mapping it says okay so for the boring mode let's make the throttle response take more time so it's not that jerky when you rotate you don't jump immediately to the full power you, you take a bit more so it's smoother you take like for example a quarter of a second to reach full power and then you don't give full power you only give say 80 percent of the power you could give and, and it, then it does this for all rev, all rev ranges so it, it it probably kills the power at low revs so you don't wheelie immediately and it gives you more power gradually but less gradually meaning flatter than the spicy mode for example another good use of engine mappings which is very used in formula one is to make the car less powerful on purpose why launch control 
when launch control was banned, they had to improvise. And so what they, they did was, okay, in first gear, in these rev ranges, which is from the start rev range, which, which I think is like 10,000 RPM, all the way up to 18,000, the engine's not going to have the full 900 horsepower it had. No, it has way less. It's going to only have, say, 400. Why? Because that's all the tires can handle. So that make that made launching them a breeze, and that's why you saw full grids launching not the same rates, because they, they did these little tricks. And these tricks are used. They're used in on not much use on road cars because road cars are heavy and really need all that torque to, to get going. But I know they are used on motorcycles, especially higher end ones, so you don't wheelie every time you try to launch from a stoplight. So the very first revs are usually very, very weak on purpose, and then it gets progressively better. Also, torque on the engine mapping is kind of like, apparently, I think, it's kind of like butter. If you, you can spread it any way you like, but you have a limited amount of it. So if you want to make a super sport really fast bike, what you do is, oh, okay, you want to go, okay. What you do is you take the torque and you push it all up to the high revs, which means the lower revs are a bit dry. So that's why usually super sports all the way up to say 7K RPM, just don't feel very oomphy and then it all goes nuts because you can then choose remember the engine mapping you can say okay 6.9 thousand rpm maximum you got like 40 horsepower 7 thousand rpm maximum you have got like 150 so when you cross that magic threshold all hell breaks loose so yeah, that's that's basically how engine mappings work. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Remember, I said some things which are on purpose uh, simplifications, or else I would be talking about this all day. That's basically it. It's a little computer that has a mapping, the engine mapping, and then tells how much gas to go where. That's why sometimes they need updates because the people who work this can make mistakes and then make specific scenarios in which it isn't working correctly. And that is also why when you put a slip on exhaust on a fuel injected bike generally you don't need to do much else because unless you have removed the exhaust sensor you're cool the bike is going to adjust itself and even back pressure and stuff like that it should have sensors for that so it adjusts itself unless it's a huge difference it should be able to adjust itself with not much of an issue more advantages of the fuel injected ones in fact it has so many advantages that's the reason why you don't get carved bikes anymore because it only has advantages and very little disadvantages and the main one being harder to maintain because it is an electronic component which doesn't like vibration heat extreme heat extreme cold uh, toxic fumes the whole thing that are you the whole lots of things that are usually inside the engines well electronics don't generally like that <laughs> So yeah, that's it. That's my little mechanical rant of the day. And the next one should be what is torque and what is power. Cage route. Wow. <laughs> Let's do it again. It's a bit dangerous here. Woo, this is 